What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, Daviri will be out within the next, like, 16 hours, whenever this video is going up. And we're doing a pre-release guide on Steel Path Circuit, the mode you'll be playing to get those Incarnate Unlockers we were talking about in the previous video. I did a 12-hour stream today, and we did a lot of theory crafting, and also did some more reviewing of the VODs of all the gameplay we have of this game mode. So I'll be going over some min-maxing and basically how to foolproof your runs. So even if you do get stuck on a crappy, like, level zero or your rally, you can still beat the Steel Path version of Circuit. So we'll see how this is going to go. It's going to involve pretty much no actual weapons. The amount of RNG you're going to have to rely on here will be basically zero. Uh, and it, but it will require some late game gear that you might not potentially have. But either way, we'll be going over it. Also to give lots of tips and tricks for uh, Steel Path Circuit, as well as some potential speculation on, on some certain builds that might not normally work that you might have to be reconsidering once you get into the circuit. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you're sub. We'll be doing lots and lots of the Viri videos in the right place for that kind of info. Also check out the live stream channel. Once the Viri goes live, there will be Twitch drops for Warframe. It's not the best Twitch drops, like a, a poster, or like a bobblehead and stuff, but hey, you know what? It's free stuff, technically, uh, and yeah, you can hang out while we're grinding and stuff on the channel. So, either way. So, Steel Path Circuit. What is, what's the, the big lowdown on this? Well, I'm going to give you a real quick rundown on what you can min-max this for. So, this is going to be the Warframe type mode where you're doing like different random missions. So, like, they're doing Void Flood right now. There will be like survival, excavation, etc., etc. There will be different types of modes. So, if you want to get your Incarnate Unlockers, you will need to do this on the Steel Path and actually grind it on the Steel Path. But, the, the problem is that people might think, oh, it will be too hard, it's randomized gear. The thing is, there are certain things in this game that are so blatantly stronger than most other things that you can just abuse meta, that even if you're on randomized gear with aspects to this game like the Helmet System, you'll be able to basically solo Steel Path with pretty much no weapons. Uh, and on certain frames, definitely with no weapons. So we'll be going over Helmuth setups today for running Steel Path. Also, just already start off with some tips here. In that circuit mode, it seems to be corrupted enemies and Thrax. So if you are modding out your weapons, let's say you get randomized onto like the, the Verma Splicer primary, which we have on right now. Now, I have Bane of the Grenier on here. If we were doing Steel Path Circuit, if you have Primed Bane of the Corrupted, this will be one of the best in-slot mods. And of course, this Bane of the Corrupted, there's a version of this for shotguns, melees, secondary pistols, and I think that's pretty much it. So, now Baro Katir has not brought these for a long time, some of these. So if you don't have it, don't feel too bad. You don't need to technically run a Bane mod. Uh, but yeah, whatever weapon you are going to be running for this... Especially on the Steel Path, if you have Prime Bane of the Corrupted, this will be a mod you should run. Now, it probably won't work on the Thrax enemies, so it won't really be that big of a deal on Thrax specifically. But we do have confirmation from the devs that Acolytes will not spawn in the Steel Path version. So lots of weapons you might think are annoying for Steel Path. Like, okay, well, my Phantasma Prime is so good for trash ads, but it's the worst weapon in the game for Acolytes. Don't worry about it. There will be no Acolytes... So weapons that are bad against Acolytes will be able to run completely free. So Phantasma Normal, Phantasma Prime, going to tear through enemies with a Heat Proc build. Alright, so another thing we can go over here is the potential for shield gating builds to not be functioning as they normally do in Steel Path Circuit. Uh, this is not confirmed, but from what it looked like in the gameplay footage, you might not be able to use gear items, and that would include the Kane Dragon Key. If you know how to do shield getting in Warframe, I'm going to give you a brief rundown on it right now. But basically, let's start off the preface of the the Kane Dragon Key is supposed to be a debuff for your character by removing part of your shields. But the way that shield getting in Warframe works is that once your shield is fully restored, you will get a uh, couple moments of invincibility. If your shield is not fully restored, it's like a split second of invincibility. So when you, if you're able to fully restore your shield, your shield getting invincibility duration is longer. I'm going to quickly show you that on these uh, some enemies over here. But since you will not be able to have a decaying dragon key equipped potentially, you will have a full value shield, which is much harder to do usually depending on what kind of build you're going for. So as you can see, 
we used the um, the terrify ability from Necros. That's going to mean where enemies are going to have their armor fully removed, and it will let you easily take care of them with pretty much like bare minimum gear, even just nuking them down with abilities here. So for shield getting, you want to have as low a shield as possible. And the fact that shield getting might not potentially work as well unless you have like a multiple brief respites, I'm going to recommend Vazarin Focus School. The reason this is going to be potentially good is, like I said, you won't be able to shield gate properly, maybe. Uh, and we have the ability called Protective Sling. Allies touched by Void Sling are granted immunity to damage for 5 seconds and heal by 6% over 10 or 5 seconds. It basically just makes you invincible is what this is saying. So if you chain this properly... We're going to be using the Terrify ability from Necros on the Helminth, and you need about 160, like, something percent strength. I'll put together a on-the-fly uh, Helminth Necros build on any frame. I can show you this after this, but I'll just quickly show it on my, on my, my Sevagoth right now. We get 177% strength. That's the kind of numbers you're going to be looking for if you want to be fully removing enemy armor. And Thrax enemies are armor stripped by Terrify. Exodus units are armor stripped by Terrify. The only thing is if an enemy has their overguard up, they will not take the stun portion of this, which makes them run in an opposite direction. So this is a good enough ability for protecting excavators as it makes most enemies run away from you. It will armor strip all enemies, making them very easy to kill. So now that we have the enemies weakened and debuffed, how are we going to kill them? Well, if you are really, really not wanting to rely on RNG at all, you can go with the Operator, actually, and make an amp that's good for killing Steel Path trash ads. The one I've got right now is a 747. It will have the primary, like, jet engine, uh, uh, primary fire, and then the alt fire. I'm testing out the Glaive Launcher, which will bounce between enemies. As far as our amp arcane, we have the Virtuous Trojan Arcane, and I believe Eternal Eradicate. So whenever I... Uh, hit an enemy with this amp, it will do viral damage, actually. Let's quickly first show the show the showcase of Vazarin being invincible. So I just broke my shield, I dashed through myself, I'm invincible. Do it again, I'm invincible again. This is why you can cast Terrify, enemies have no armor, and enemies are dead. I mean, that's just Sevagoth's abilities. Don't ever call Sevagoth Mastery Fodder, by the way. Um, so Terrify is going to be one of the keys to using some of the most broken stuff in the game to use steel, uh, do Steel Path Circuit on basically any frame. Terrify is one of the options. You basically just, we'll go back to the ship and go over some stuff after this, but basically just use the most OP stuff. As far as the most OP stuff in the game, it's going to be involving Helmet abilities such as Terrify from Necros, Nourish from Grendel. Nourish from Grendel is extremely powerful now, giving a viral damage buff, an energy multiplier, an AOE viral stun, and things of that nature. And it also works for your full team. So if you have somebody running Terrify, somebody running Nourish from Grendel, having one person on Zenerik will make it where you're getting like 30 energy per second with Nourish from Grendel. Additionally, if you're if you're not maybe not in the Steel Path as much, it can technically work on the Steel Path, but Gauss's Helmet ability, Thermal Sunder, is one of the best Helmet abilities in the game. This will definitely nuke the Normal Path version of Circuit. The Steel Path version, you can still get some, especially if the enemies are armor stripped, you can get the job done with that as well. But it's more, more going to be a... Normal path version. But yeah, if the enemies are armored with Terrify, you can throw in Gauss as well. Also, technically, Korra's Helmet ability uh, uh, and Snare can also be very nice. So basically, you're just going to want to go and look for the most OP Helmet abilities. And whatever frame you end up being randomized onto, what you will be able to do is you, you once you see your gear, you will be able to leave the mission and go and put Helmet abilities and Archon shards on. So let's say I got randomized onto Yoreli, and I really don't want to play Yoreli. Let's just say, actually, this entire loadout is what I got stuck with. What would I do if I wanted to just bite the bullet and still do the Steel Path version? Even on a level 0 Yoreli. Now, here's what I would do. I would go in here, and to have Terrify give full armor strip, you want like 164% strength, that is. I think it is. So we'd search, search strength up here, and to get 164% strength, you just need two Power Strength mods. You need Umbral Intensify maxed out. And you also want Augur Secrets. We're at 168. We can fully armor strip enemies with this. Now, the rest of the mods we want to throw on here, we want to throw on some range. We would probably want to throw on some efficiency, too, just so we can make sure we can always cast it. So I'd throw on, I'd throw on Stretch. And it's, if you don't have every mod, of course, you're going to put on whatever mod you have that's a similar type of stat. That's not the one I'm showing. You'd probably throw on another range mod, because I just like range a lot. Maybe Augur Reach. And of course, we would have to go back to our ship to put the Helmet ability on Yoreli. We probably, I'd probably replace like her K drive, honestly, because I hate that K drive. Um, but yeah, you're seeing kind of like what I'm getting at here. You will be able to, you can bake a skeleton of a Terrify build on any frame quite easily, 
and this will be doing enough to take care of these enemies. Um, so yeah, I, I guess the rest would just be like, you know, maybe a little bit of casting speed. Uh, Terrify has a long cast time. But then of course you're going to want some survivability too. It's not like the enemies will always be stunned. So throwing on Rolling Guard for some shield gating. Additionally, if shield gating doesn't work properly, even an adaptation uh, like health build can work for normal steel path levels. We're not doing endurance. And honestly, for circuit, for steel path circuit, I'm not expecting to be wanting to grind it after I get my level 10, honestly. So like this kind of basis right here is enough. You could even throw a keep, Creeping Terrify in here to slow enemies down. Uh, and, you know, really, you have lots of choices. How about some duration for longer stun duration uh, and things like that? So that's going to be enough to take care of uh, whatever is they're going to throw at you as the, you know, as long as you can break overguard. I will admit the amp is not great for overguard. But, yeah, you know, like maybe like even throw an Aegis if shield getting is not as good as it should be. So with just this setup, you can take care of steel path enemies if you use the amp. Let's actually go back to the ship and talk about some amps you could use for this. Um... But let's just do a quick showcase as well. So I'll throw I'll throw on Necros with Terrify. This is not a full armor strip build right here. One of these should be actually. All right, full armor strip here with Terrify, and I've got the 747 uh, amp for my operator. Now I'm going to pause them just so they stand still. But the idea of what I'm trying to, to teach you guys here is that Terrify will remove the enemy armor, and then you can use you can use mag, things like Magus Melt to get more damage for your amp. But as you can see. We can actually do pretty good damage on these guys, as long as they're armor stripped. This is a weird Necros build, but as you can see, we're only using abilities and our Operator Amp. And there's there's no reason you wouldn't have access to your Operator Amp during the Viri. Look at that, 200,000 damage hit on that Heavy Gunner. And these guys are pretty much as close to Steel Path as I can get in here. Um, so yeah, the Operator Amp with a an ad clearing roll, Helminth uh, meta abilities such as Necros Terrify... Uh, you know, Nourish from Grendel. That's going to be very, very helpful. Now I'm going to go back to the ship and we're going to go over some gear there as well. So basically, if you want to like extremely prepare for this, you can go on every frame of the game and put a Terrify build on every frame. You can also technically put a, you know, a Dispensary build from Protea too to drop some orbs potentially as well. Um, now some other things that might be a problem. I'm really worried about Limbo specifically. I think Limbo is going to have a bad time on the Steel Path here because not only is he dealing with, you know, corrupted enemies who have nullifiers, by the way, and Limbo hates nullifiers, but Limbo also doesn't like Eximus or Thrax because those, um, those both have overguard. So I'm thinking Limbo might be one of the worst frames of the game for this, unfortunately, especially because you're forced to fight Corrupted. Um, so here's the amp I was showing in that, that showcase. Um... I was prepped, I'm just testing it out, so I think maybe a 7, 7, 7, the, like with Propa, Clamora, Certus, could be better in the end. But, you know, I do like the, the test out some other stuff. The pod scaffolds that glaive launcher, and it can be kind of nice to kill trash ants. So basically just throw on some armor strip, throw on a, a good amp, and you should be good to go. We've got Magus Melt on here to make it where when we Void Slim, we get increased heat damage, which work on our amp. Definitely not needed. You can throw on Magus Anomaly for grouping up enemies. But remember, if you are going to be running Vazarin, like I was saying earlier, one of the abilities of Vazarin is called Void Snare, which will pull enemies in. So things like Magus Anomaly are not going to be needed when you have an ability on the Operator that can pull enemies in already. So a little bit of redundancy, so it's up to you. Uh, but as far as the Amp Arcanes, I got Virtuous Trojan. As we are basically planning for these enemies to have no armor, this will make it where our Amp is doing viral damage. So as you can see right here, on the Clamora Prism, about 600 damage, and most of it is viral damage. And on our uh, Pod Scaffold, the like Glaive Launcher, it's about 3,000 damage with viral damage being the main weighting. So, interesting. It's also got 54% 50%, crit chance and a 2.6 multiplier. I mean, you just saw the Simulacrum. That was like multiple hundred thousand on that Heavy Gunner. But, of course, this is really relying on them not being armored. So you could do the same thing on other amps as well. If you want to go on the 777, uh, just throw on throw on Virtuous Trojan. Now, Virtuous Trojan won't be necessary, but I think it will be good, especially if you are modding around having these enemies with no armor. Okay, so that's going to be the, the two main amps I'm going to show you. You could also use the 177, like the, you know, the go-to Void Angel and Eidolon amp, but I just think it's going to be a little bit too slow, and I want something with a little bit more AoE to it. And as far as like every other focus school, I think every focus school will be viable for Steel Path Circuit. Uh, Vazir will be very nice just for survivability and grouping up enemies. Unairu will be good. Let's say you don't want to play Necros. 
or use Terrify. There is an armor stripping ability on Unairu. Um, launches a bomb that removes all enemy armor. That's really good. It works on Thrax, obviously. Um, and then Unairu Wisp can give you more amp damage, too. So Unairu could be nice. It also has a built-in Prime Share footed for your operator with Poise. So you won't get knocked over, which can be very nice. Um, Matarai... Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're going to need as much damage as Matarai is going to provide. But let's say you're trying to hit an exact number on your Terrify build. Matarai can help you get to that exact number with Sling Strength. Um, which, oh, it's Chain Sling, right? No, Sling Strength. Uh, switching your Operator, or switching your Warframe after you do multiple Void Slings will give you increased Power Strength. I don't usually worry about this, but it technically can work. Also, Contamination Wave makes you do a lot of extra damage against enemies that are affected by this ability with your Amp. So... I'm thinking just to, to for RNG protection, I'm thinking that these types, like going with having your operator as a fallback can be very good, especially with how powerful armor strip can be. Now, hilariously, one of the worst ones might be Naramon because it's very melee focused, but I believe there is an ant buff somewhere on here. Um, is it Killer's Rush? One of these gives you like some kind of ant buff, but I believe that Matarai has the, or Naramon, Naramon has the weakest ant buff, so... I, that's probably what I wouldn't really recommend. And then Zetaric can be very good if you have someone on your team using Nourish, as this 5 energy per second from Wellspring will stack with Nourish, and like I said earlier in the video, can be up to like 30 energy per second in some situations. Let's take a quick look at Helmet before we call it. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's going to be here soon, guys, so we will be able to enjoy it soon. Okay, another one I forgot, Breach Surge. Just look at all the meta helmets. If you've been watching my previous videos where I go over like helmet builds, uh, things like Condemn going to give you great shield getting. For having shield getting problems, this could be a very nice replacement to whatever you're using before. Gives you shields per enemy hit. Can stun enemies. And of course, they won't stun them during Overguard, but that's just how Overguard is. Uh, Condemn can be very good on many frames. Breach Surge from Wisp, going to make it where enemies are going to take a lot of extra damage. And also, enemies not in Overguard will be blinded. Now, this debuff does work on enemies with Overguard, um, but yeah, they won't, they won't be like armor shipped or anything like that. So another very good helmet. Like I said, if you have these helmet abilities available to you, it's in your best interest to put them on pretty much every frame. I know it's a lot of resources, uh, and I'd say don't do it until you feel like you have to do it, but this is just like an extra prep guide here. So yeah, those two are some of the, some really good helmets. Um, dispensary, like I said, this can be a nice little thing. If you are playing with a team, some organization with team, like, okay, you run Nourish, I'll run uh, Dispensary, etc., cetera, et cetera, can be very nice. Eclipse to give you some, let's say you do want to use your weapons. Eclipse does not work on amps or abilities, but Eclipse will buff your weapons and maybe make them actually steal path valuable. So if you're on like the Mark 1 Bratton, think about Eclipse potentially, or maybe just use Armor Strip, honestly. Um, so for this row, nothing really that great. And Snare can be good for grouping up enemies, but I feel like Armor Strip would probably be better, honestly, um, as this also does not work on overguarded enemies like most things in the game. Uh, Fire Blast can be Armor Strip, but I'd say just go with Terrify, honestly. Uh, Gloom can be good to slow enemies down, but, you know, if they're Steel Path and you're having damage... I'm, 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 I'm anticipating there being damage problems on the Steel Path, not like CC problems. So if the enemy is Armor Strip, they are a lot easier to kill than if they're just slowed down with full armor, because you might not have the firepower to bring them out, depending on what kind of builds you have. Going over the last couple of uh, abilities here. Oh, I didn't really talk about this. Let's say you are randomized onto a frame that normally uses a stat stick melee, such as Korra, Atlas, or Gara. There is nothing that says you cannot just switch. Let's say you're like, okay, I want to play Korra, but I don't have a stat stick build equipped on this random melee it's telling me to equip. You can put a stat stick build together on the fly, guys. If you know how a stat stick build goes together, you can put it together before you load into the mission while you're in the cave before the mission, okay? So throw together like a corrosive stat stick build on Korra. Maybe do Lycast Hunt. Uh, and then you'll be supplying energy to yourself and teammates. On Atlas, same thing. Put together an Atlas stat stick build immediately. And you can play Atlas with a stat stick as normal on any melee weapon. You won't have a melee, or you won't have a ribbon for it probably min-maxed. But you honestly don't need a ribbon for stat sticks for most situations. Uh, here's Nourish I was talking about earlier. If you're a min-maxing with a team, I'd say having one person in your team with Nourish can be very nice, especially if you are counting on these enemies being armor stripped. Look at this right here. A viral damage increase for your weapons. This will be so great if someone on your team has Nourish. Additionally, if you are going to be doing Steel Path Circuit on Grendel, Grendel is amazing for Steel Path with just abilities. So if you see Grendel, 
Uh, check out my Grendel videos from a couple of months ago. Breach Surge, Grendel, extremely good for Steel Path. Pillage could be nice, but Pillage is an extremely high energy, uh, extremely high strength requirement. So consider that as well, uh, especially if shield getting is not going to be as strong as we were, were used to. This can give you shields back and you'll be shield getting no problem. Uh, Reeve could also be good. It's a percent based uh, damage attack, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it's going to be good enough. Resonator can be nice for CC, but again, I'd rather them be dead than CC'd. Roar is always good for a damage buff. Shuriken's an armor strip too, but it's a little bit more clunky than Terrify, and we're not worrying about Acolytes here, so we don't need to worry about that, as Terrify does not normally work on Acolytes. We've got Thermal Sunder from Gauss, very good for nuking. Thara Strike, another good armor removal skill. And Zatas Whisper, a very nice weapon damage buff. So that's going to be it for the video, guys. Hopefully you found this interesting and helpful. Uh, I will see you shortly after the patch notes for Dreary come out, and then we'll be streaming all day with Twitch drops, okay? Uh, the, the big... The big, like, long and short of this video that I hope you can take away from this is that if you plan properly, having bad RNG for Daviri Steel Path Circuit will not matter. Additionally, if you are able to complete at least one wave as whatever crappy frame you're stuck with, you can re-roll that, that slot. Let's say you have Hydroid, Inaro, Shirelli as your choices. As long as you beat at least wave one as one of those frames and you load back in to try it again, the frame you had just ran that run on will not no longer be there. So you'll at least have a better chance to get like Saren or like, you know, whatever, like Mesa or whatever. So hope you guys found this video fun and helpful. I'll see you next time. I appreciate all the support. Take it easy. Peace.